By now, we've all heard of and know about the infamous Skibbity Toilet series, made by this guy, whose name I cannot say within the first 7 seconds of this video without being demonetized. Anyway, when this series first blew up on YouTube, the internet was split into two. One side condemned Skibbity Toilet due to its brain-dead nature and cringe. This side was mainly composed of everyone from the 2000s and below. The other side, however, genuinely enjoyed this series and gave it the support and money it needed to explode in popularity. This side, however, was almost entirely composed of kids born in the 2010s and up. In other words, it was Gen Alpha. Gen Alpha and the toddlers who spend 16 hours a day on YouTube allowed Skibbity Toilet to dominate the internet as they watched this series non-stop. However, it wasn't just Skibbity Toilet that blew up because of them. A channel by the name of Lanky Box also blew up because of Gen Alpha. Although I have no evidence to support this claim, all I'm gonna do is show you part of an intro of a video that has this thumbnail and this title and after you watch this I, I think i think you'll agree with me it's so bad i'm giving you a fair warning to just skip ahead and i genuinely mean it because after watching the opening intro i no joke stopped writing the script to this video for three minutes and honestly considered if internet regulation is such a bad idea anyway here you go yeah and if you were curious the next two hours of that video doesn't get any better i can honestly say that i would rather be waterboarded <laughs> for 10 hours than watch even 10 minutes of that video seriously do not watch any of that content. I'm not trying to use reverse psychology on you. I am genuinely trying to spare you the 10 years of agony you will experience watching even one second of that filth. I would rather you watch the entirety of Skibbity Toilet over that. Anyway, Skibbity Toilet and Lanky Box are creations that are allowed to exist because of Gen Alpha. Why though? Why on earth would Gen Alpha watch this disgusting garbage? But more importantly, how? How could it be possible that Gen Alpha created these abominations? How did our children, the literal future of humanity, develop this taste for brain rot content? There's a plethora of reasons for this, with some being more natural and obvious than the rest. However, there is one root cause for it all, and this cause, if not rectified, is why Gen Alpha is on a path that could spell chaos for the foreseeable future. Let's go ahead and quickly get the obvious stuff out of the way. Gen Alpha is mainly comprised of toddlers and young children. These kids, just like you and I once did, will watch just about anything that requires no thinking or movement. The less thinking required, the more they enjoy it. The more colorful, the better. Why would a toddler want to go outside and spray their brother or sister with a super soaker and have to go through all the efforts of changing clothes and drying off when they could just sit in their room and watch someone on YouTube do it? When there's a simpler route, a kid will always choose it. Another thing is, these kids haven't matured yet, so they enjoy content that us older folks would consider toilet humor. No pun intended. Okay, we got the obvious stuff out of the way. Let's get into the nitty gritty stuff. First off, why is content like Skibbity Toilet and Lanky Box so appealing for Gen Alpha? I'll give you a hint, it's not because they're short videos. Skibbity Toilet is short, yes. A lot of the episodes in the series are each under five minutes. However, when you look at the garbage that Lanky Box produces, the videos are much, much longer. Also, just throwing this out there, this channel uploads four times a day. Four times a day. These depraved people are content farming, and although I believe in the rule of innocent until proven guilty, I am 99% sure that this channel buys most of its comments. J just look at these, look at these. I can make a whole video dogging these people, and I just might, so be on the lookout for that in the future. 
I'm, I won't play any more of that brain rot because I, I care for y'all self, but there's something these two videos have in common, and it's constant stimulation. In other words, it's the equivalent of a Family Guy Subway Surfer short. There's always some crazy explosion or some cringy sound effect or song being played every two seconds. It's to keep those short attention span gremlins watching the videos so they can make more money. It's, it's basically a vicious cycle. These content farming channels produce videos with brain rot edits, which lower the attention spans of kids, which means they need to add more edits to make the same money, and the cycle repeats. It's sad, really. Also, before I move on, a quick little note I'd like to add is that Gen Alpha isn't technically the first time we've seen something like this. Not to this degree, maybe, but don't act like we, Gen Z, didn't have our fair share of cringy videos and weird obsessions when we were little. Because yes, we did. Anyway, I, I think it's about time we put all our eggs in one basket and talk about the root cause of this problem. Technically, there's two, but since they go hand in hand, I'm just gonna lump them together as one. Now, let's think about what the root cause is. Let's go back to when we were little. Most of us can remember a time before things like iPhones, iPads, tablets were mainstream. I remember being in kindergarten on electronic day, and instead of having a phone, we brought in our Game Boys and DSs and played Mario Kart together. Now, if that same thing were to happen now in kindergarten, all you would see would be phones, iPads, and maybe a Nintendo Switch if the rich kid decides to bring it. Keep that in mind as I ask you this next question. Eventually, when mobile phones and tablets came out and we were given them, did your parent or guardian supervise what you were doing? Did they have filters on the search engine to get rid of the mature content? Like me, I'm sure a lot of you said no. And if your parents did do that for you, then please thank them, because believe me, no child should even have the opportunity to go on the live leak and watch a Chinese steel worker have his arm ripped off. And there lies the problem. The parents. Not the child, not the people who produce X-rated content or websites, not the content farming YouTube channels. Ultimately, it is solely the parents' fault. Why do you think we call Gen Alpha iPad kids? It's because these poor kids are being neglected by their parents. These people would rather shove a phone in their infant child's face and let them watch brain rot for hours on end than spend time with them. Why? Because then they don't have to pay attention to them. They can go into another room and do something else they enjoy. And if you thought it couldn't get any worse, it does. Here's a question for you. Who is raising Gen Alpha? Millennials are. Now recall back to what I said earlier about Gen Z not having phones and whatnot when they were Gen Alpha's age. If Gen Z was only getting a hold of phones and unsupervised internet access when they were in their preteens, then millennials would have been in their 20s when that stuff came out. Sure, they had desktops, but believe me when I say it's not the same. Most of these parents don't even know what their kids are watching. They'll select a video of Peppa Pig for their child to watch, and then after a couple videos autoplay, then their kid is watching something like Sussiest Gods that were raised in Ohio by Skibbity Toilet. Jesus Christ, I can't believe I said that. Future me, please do not put that in the video. And times have changed. The majority of YouTube users are kids because kids don't have jobs or a family to provide for. They have school and that's it. So they can watch as much YouTube as they want. And I'm not even gonna get into kids using social media in class. That That's a whole nother issue on its own. Anyway, look, I know I sound like an old fart by saying this, but all of this is extremely important and we need to address it. But how? As I have said in the past, I am 120% against restriction of free speech on the internet. People should be allowed to make whatever they want, whenever they want. As much as I detest people like Lankybox, they do have the right to make that disgusting content. However, 
I do believe that young children, mainly seven and under, should not be allowed to visit adult sites or spend 16 hours a day on social media. So then, what's the solution? Well, in my mind, there's three ways to solve this plague. The first one, the easiest way but my least favorite way, is to basically split the internet into two. One side would basically be the internet we have now. No censorship, no blockades, nothing. However, to access this side of the internet, you would have to have an account with your search engine, Chrome or Edge or Firefox or whatever you use, and you would have to verify that you're 18 and older with that company. The other side of the internet wouldn't require you to have an account or verify your age, but any R-rated content would be unavailable to view or search. This side of the internet would be for children. Let me go ahead and state this again. I hate this idea, and I do not want this to happen. However, if need be, this is a way to solve this issue. The second way, which is much harder, but better than the first one in terms of not requiring you to give up your ID, is for phones to use fingerprints to determine if you are the owner of the phone or if your child is using it. For example, when you buy your phone, you would let it scan your fingerprint like we already do, and when someone tries to access adult content, it'll ask for your fingerprint again to ensure that the owner has the phone and not the child. Obviously, this isn't foolproof because of parents unknowingly allowing their kids to input their own fingerprints, but at the very least, it would help deter children from going to these sites. Again, we're talking about kids 7 and under. And then comes the final solution, which is technically impossible, but the one that I wish would happen. And to simply put, it's just for parents to actually care about their children and use the parental lock controls on the phones to filter out R-rated content and for them to limit the amount of time a day they spend on electronics. Or just don't give a 3-year-old an iPhone 14 Giga Mega Ultra Pro Max Deluxe. It's that simple. No one said raising a kid was easy. It's your job as a parent to nurture them and educate them and care about them. Letting a phone raise your children only spells disaster for the future of humanity. And with that being said, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then please let me know down in the comments below. I do read everything y'all type because I genuinely care about y'all and I love talking to my community. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the flip side. Yeah, so basically that whole video was just me going on a rant. Wonderful.